Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. My name is Michael McKeever, and I will be your host today, where the episode is, it's a short story, which is about short plays. Joining me is our usual panel, the always wonderful actress, producer, Miss Iris Acker. Just next to her is noted South Florida critic and founder of Florida Theater on Stage, Mr. Bill Hirschman. And next to me is the Carbonell Award-winning actress and a great friend, the one and only Karen Stevens. Now, our special guest today is Mr. John Manzelli, Artistic Director of City Theater and the overseer of Summer Shorts every year. It is a pleasure to have you here, John. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, let's get right into it. Right. Over the past 10 years or so, short plays have been really, really um, popular. There are festivals all over the country, all over the world, really. Uh, the biggest and probably the most prestigious is City's um, Summer Shorts. I won't argue with you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, why do you think short plays have become so popular over these past few years? Well, I, I think, Michael, the main reason is that is, it's the way we consume entertainment now. We consume entertainment in smaller, smaller amounts of time. We're all social, socially savvy now, Facebook, YouTube, everything is shorter and shorter amounts of attention span. And I think for theater, short plays is the perfect theatrical you know, fit into the short attention span that we're developing. You get a story, you get it from the beginning, the middle, and the end, and it's nine minutes long. And you know, for those of us who love two, three hour drama, that's wonderful, but there's a, a segment of the population who doesn't know that they want to sit for three hours to watch anything. And they get a full theatrical experience in short doses. How many short plays do you normally have in a, in a summer shorts festival? About eight. Oh, there you About go. Eight. Yeah. There you go. So, so here's a question. How do you fit the entire construct of a play into 10 minutes? Well. Uh, Probably throw that back to you, honestly. <laughs> I, I might know the answer to that, but I figure I'd ask you because I can't answer it well. Michael, having written a short play, <laughs> ten minutes play, but that's a loaded question. Well, for John. let me. No, 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 it's fine. Um, I, I think it's it, it is in the playwriting, and that's that's the real thing. Um, it's hard to write a ten minute play. It's deceptive because you don't have the ability to get into as much exposition and character development. You've got to do that in an incredibly short amount of time, get to your dramatic action, get to your resolution, and all that has to happen in nine, 10 minutes. Uh, uh, you're, quite frankly, one of the two best writers in the country at this. I won't tell you who the other one is. But, uh, <laughs> and that, that's honestly true. So why don't you tell me? I, well, I have to tell you, um, when I asked that, it was because yeah. I, I've written one or two mm -hmm. um, short plays, and it is incredibly hard. It is a I'm really hard thing to, it's exactly what John said, get the entire beginning, middle, and end, uh, work up to a climax, and do it in a short period of time. People just assume because a play is short that it's easy to write. It's really Probably hard to do. It's, it's really, really quite a challenge. So I, um, I take my hat off to, um, to John and, and the folks at City because there's a lot of plays. How many plays do you go through every? R roughly seven, eight hundred. There you go. Seven to eight hundred plays that they have to look through, and a lot of them yeah. aren't. I don't want to say aren't as accomplished as they should be, which is a nice well, way of saying they're just. What's the criteria? What, what are you look? What are you looking for? Well, I mean, it, they come in different categories, honestly. When I try to put on a program, I don't want to put on one show that has all the same kinds of pieces. It would actually be very easy to put on eight relationship plays between two or three people. That is the most common play that's written. That would be, that would be very simple, quite frankly. But, but it doesn't make for a particularly great evening. So I'm trying to look for things that are you know, very funny, that fall more in the, the sketch comedy realm once in a while, all the way to really good dramatic pieces that that, that have their entire evening in, you know, in one 10 minutes. Last year we did a piece called Tornado. Uh. It was a gorgeous piece. <laughs> you know, uh, that is a full little play in 10 minutes. It's crushing. It, Could you describe the, the yeah. story of the play? Sure. It, it really it's, is a, it's a gentleman who goes into a sporting goods shop to buy a, a uniform for his son. And what we find is that his son has just died. He's just died of leukemia. And all he's wanted to do was have his son play football one time. So he tries to buy him a uniform so he can bury him in a football jersey. He's a former uh, high, college football player. And it's just, it's a gorgeous story between these two men, uh, the owner of the shop and the football player. And you would, you know, when you first read it, you think, wow, this is really heavy. You know, can, can, you, can you invest that much, that fast? And that play is so well crafted that you can. And very often that is the problem. Very often the play isn't crafted well enough that you're willing to invest that much emotional weight 
in a story with characters you've met for two, two or three minutes, you know. Ten minutes is such a short time. <laughs> such a short time. And in, in a full-length play, it's really, you don't even get the exposition. It's like a prelude. It's like mm -hmm. a curtain raiser almost <laughs> <laughs> the first ten minutes, you True. know. So, I mean, what, I don't know how you do it, Michael. <laughs> What what's what are some of the most challenging things about producing? Uh... Well, producing them is a little different um, than the writing itself. Mm -hmm. And the challenge for me uh, producing them is that I, I think, as you say, there's short play festivals everywhere, and and they come in all kinds of varieties and all kinds of levels. And and short plays work great for theaters to put up as as introductions to writers and fundraisers and and these kind of things. But City Theater's never done that. City Theater is about producing plays on the highest level that you can produce them. We try to produce these short plays with the same values that you produce full lengths. And that becomes the challenge, because when you're trying to create eight plays in one night, you've got to create eight worlds of some kind. Mm -hmm. You have to, the, the hardest thing is actually teching the show. How so? Well, a full length play, you'll, the, the hardest thing to tech in a show is the beginning and the end, right? Mm -hmm. And then big dramatic moments, because you're trying to create world building. So in a short play, you have that every six minutes. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you, don't get, you don't get an experience where you, oh you introduce the play and then you have 30 pages of dialogue wow. where we just sit in an apartment, it's all wonderful, and then we have a moment and then we hit an admission. No, it's start a play, three minutes later something dramatic happens, a minute later something dramatic happens, and we end. And one of the so. things that City Theater does, at least the last few years, has been to place these eight disparate plays in a framework. Uh, yes. One year you were walking through a art gallery mm -hmm. and each play was represented by a different picture on the wall. Right. And talk a little bit about that. There's, there's a unification yeah. there. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was my idea when I came in. I, I, don't like, I don't like the sort of throwing all pieces together. and, and I, I like trying to thematically create a, a work out of them. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. Um, the museum year, I thought, was particularly successful. Yeah. That was a beautiful that worked really way well. to tie yeah. in. Last year's, maybe not so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you take a shot, it comes and goes. Um, <laughs> but, but this year, what we're going to do is celebrate, um, it's our 20th anniversary. Wow. So we're going to celebrate us. We're going to celebrate our 20th anniversary. And that's the way we're going to tie the whole package in, around the anniversary of Summer Shorts and City Theater. When you put those eight shows together, I, I know that it's a challenge to mm -hmm. uh, put them in the proper order, where you, oh, the, yeah. you have the first, second, third, and, and sure. so on that you do. Talk about that process. How do you, how do you what defines a beginning play and what defines the, the finale? How, how do well, you put that together? It's interesting. Um, I have a good friend of mine who worked for Second City for a long time. Oh. And I brought him in the first year uh, that I took over uh, Summer Shorts as a director. And he sat down with me and said, listen, there's a way to do this. It's not random. They've worked this out, what goes first and what goes second. Um, and for me, I think that the first play and the play you get after intermission, the audience is going to give you for free. They sit down, they're excited, they want to have a good time. So the first play, the audience is going to give you that play, really. And that's a good place for like a, a nice relationship play, an introduction play, two character play. That's a great place for that. To me, the second play has to be the one that kicks the evening off. So for me, I put the funniest thing I have in the second play. That's where it goes. That's so interesting. Well, I figure if we get that one, if the audience is rolling by the second one, then they're, um, I've got them to intermission, right? Um, frankly, the, the, the more difficult play, the, the play you can take more risk with, that one should go right in the middle or right before like the fourth to the fifth intermission play. Um, because that's a play, and I did that with Tornado. Mm -hmm. Tornado was a play that I, I couldn't put in the beginning of the program because it was too heavy. I knew I had to get the audience in and out of it. So I put a very funny piece right before it. Then I put Tornado in there, broke people's hearts. And then I said, I've got to have the funniest thing in the first 10 seconds to get them out. And this was Beth Diamond, Irene Agin, and uh, Nikki Freed doing this play about three Italian girls going to a restaurant. And in three seconds, that just took everybody out. And so there's a structure to it. And then you need a closing play. You need a play that's, usually that's a big cast play. That works. You can sure. get a big cast play to get everybody back. Everybody's on. Mm -hmm. Speaking about casts. Yes. OK, how many performers that do these eight shows? Six. Six. And it's obvious, of course, but I'll let you answer <laughs> about hiring six very versatile actors. 
Yeah, we've been fortunate in City Theater. City Theater has um, traditionally gotten six of the best people in town. I mean, that has always been... We're, we're, very, we're very thrilled that actors of high levels, like Karen Stevens here, <laughs> um, who will be in this summer, summer shorts, <laughs> has um, always want, seemed to want to work with us, seemed to want to apply the craft. And so we've been very fortunate in that way. It's, it's a challenge because it's part of the problem, difficulty with picking plays. Sometimes we'll get a gorgeous play, but I cannot cast each play independently with actors. I just can't do it. I can't have yeah. 15 actors. Um, it's just economics. So there are very good plays that I read and I go, this is a gorgeous play. I, I, I don't have the company for it. I don't have the person for it in so, this case. So the, I, I guess the, here's, here's yeah. a question. Do you um, cast the cast based on the plays or do you pick the plays based <laughs> on your cast? Oh, that's very um, good. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, boy, I wish I could do one or the other. Um, I can't. Is it a little bit of both? It has to be. It's a juggling act because, you know, best actors in town get work. So they get work way ahead of time. If I wait till I know all my plays, and right now I know six of eight, <laughs> if I try to cast that today, mm. I'm going to get a whole lot of, oh, sorry, wish I could have helped <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I cast this play, I cast most of my company. I'm still waiting on two actors. So, you know, just out there, anybody. Um, <laughs> I'm waiting on two actors for the plays. But the first four, I, this time I, I got the four actors I want, and I said, okay, now I will find the material for them. And then I will wait for the last two to see how it fill it in. Well, let me ask all the actors, the four actors here. Yeah. When you're doing short plays like this and you're having to do six completely different characterizations, what's the challenge there? Is it easy? Is it, oh, man, I can hardly wait to do this? Or is it, oh, my God, <laughs> how the heck am I going to how the heck am I going to do this and then this and 30 seconds later be this person? Oh, how, that's what is that fun. like? That's like an actor's dream. That's like. Being a pig and slop. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it gives you a chance to, to ply your craft, you know, to do what you do, you know, to dig in the, you know, the, the bucket or dig in the trunk and, you know, pull all that good stuff out, you know, get your well, creative but, juices flowing. Is it, tough, is it tough to twist, to turn? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, I've, I've done one of the, uh, one, an, another short play festival, and one of the one of the the joys of it was going on um, wearing um, an S and M um, harness underneath a suit, <laughs> just knowing that you had three seconds to, as soon as that right, scene ended right. to go in, take off the suit, and run back out on stage mm -hmm. wearing something underneath. There's this adrenaline that you get that it, that that feeds the energy of the festival, and it happens every year with summer shorts. Yeah. You just see this incredible excitement that, that, that each new show brings when the new show, That's when nice. each short begins. The director has something to do about that too, doesn't the director? Now, how many sure. different directors? Um, I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm still waiting to see what the last two plays are, but it probably will be four. Four to do eight? Eight plays, yeah. <clears throat> Good. And um, did the directors ask you, I mean, I, to me it's a real challenge for a short play director. I mean, or you just approach them. I mean, I could, I, if I were a director, I would want to get my teeth into two of those. Sure, sure. I, I mean, I get asked quite frequently, of course. Um, I generally, I mean, ultimately, people ask me, and I, put, I think about who I want on my list. I'm, I'm a little particular about it, only because, for me, part of the difficulty with, say, eight directors is that you get eight different visions, and it's very hard to create a cohesive evening. That, that, that's a big thing for me is trying to, to make the whole yeah. thing turn into something cohesive. And I've, I've had um, challenges, all for the right reasons, really, with directors who that piece of nine minutes is theirs. Right? That's their art. It's their nine minutes. But they don't have the other 50 minutes in mine, which is, which is fair. You know, it's not really their job. It's mine. So I've had challenges with directors yeah. where they don't want to give on something. And I'm like, you can't have that. <laughs> you just can't have that. I get it, but you cannot have that because you are, you are rolling over the rest of what I need to do. Um, so you have to be a flexible director as well. I, one of the things I was going to say about actors is that there are actors who are really good at this. And there are actors who are a little bit paralyzed by that, that the thing that you talked about, that changing. I, it's the right kind of actor and the right kind of director. I was going to ask, um, are there any certain uh, skill sets that, that a director, I mean, a director could be a really good director for full length, but right. does that, is that enough to make him a good or her a good director mm. for short plays? Wow, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, 
good directors. I don't know. I've, just, I've had I've had real good directors who've not been good at short plays. Oh, there you go. You know, uh, and so I don't. I really don't know what that is. I think it might have to do with the speed. Interesting, because you know it, it is. It, I mean, just for the mo I mean, even though the director has to look at the entire piece and the the entire yeah. story, it ultimately is for the director as well the actor each moment. Mm -hmm. So that's really strange that you won't be good at one and not good at the other. If I could just finish that, I think mm -hmm. that this may be because usually this happens when pieces are have more comedy in them. And mm. when I've had directors who try to make much more out of the work than, mm. than is there. Mm. Yeah, mm. That, that's it. They, mm. they try to make a nine yes. minute masterpiece. And you're kind of like, yeah, this yeah. isn't that. This yes. is yeah. what it is on the page. Yeah. It's sometimes, funny. It's good. It's sometimes exactly. uh, you know, Trust I've said material. that uh, yeah. in, in the past where I've had you know, directors who've heroically thrown themselves on top of a play. Right. Killing right. the play, Whoa. but heroically <laughs> throwing themselves right. on top of the play. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to talk a little bit about John Manzelli. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. I can get him for you. Um, I, I have to. I have to do this, but uh, I had the joy of casting you in your first professional performance as an actor, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, I, I get such pleasure, and every time I see you up there, anybody I can tell, I say, well, I gave him his first profession. <laughs> it was at the Shores Performing Arts Theater at the mm -hmm. time, and I hear everyone saying, who, where, what, what's that? But uh, you did several plays then. So you started as an actor. Yes. You were still in college, you said, I, at the time. I was. I was a senior in college, and I was fortunate enough to be cast at uh, Shores Performing Arts, which is the same building as MTC is right now, if yes. you know. Um, and I, it was... I'm always appreciative of that start I got. I got two wonderful starts. It was Enter Laughing and Yentl. Yeah, uh, an absolute natural. You know, there are... <laughs> <laughs> no, but true. Okay, so that's the beginning. That's it. Now, what, what happened from there? Um, what happened to you? Over, a, over <laughs> From then to <laughs> now? They want to know. Really quick, I, um, I became a professional actor for 20 <clears throat> years. I, um, I moved to New York City. I moved to New York City, uh, worked in New York City for a while, went to graduate school in Illinois. So I got an MFA. I worked regionally around, did the regional theater circuit. It was wonderful. I, you know, I got to play Richard III at the Illinois Shakespeare Festival and all kinds of fun stuff. And then I, uh, I finally decided I didn't want to be a struggling actor in New York City anymore. Uh -huh. um, I, I got married. And so my wife was like, yeah, so when will you be getting a check every week? So we, so, right? You know what I'm talking about. So I actually got a, um, I, I got a job as a professor at Barry University. I'm an associate professor of theater at Barry University. And I've been really fortunate. My life is all theater. I'm an associate professor. I train students. I um, artistic director of City Theater, and once in a while, I get a chance to get back on stage, like I did this year. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty and great. And fully uh -huh. committed, right? Yeah, fully that was committed. pretty fantastic well, opportunity. Well, let's talk about that. You are, as you said, uh, a Carbonell-nominated uh, actor, That's um, true. a gr terrific actor. You you are the artistic director at City Theater. You have a full-time job at Barry. <laughs> you have two beautiful children who you're doing a gorgeous job raising, and a wonderful <laughs> wife. How do you juggle all that? How do you keep all of those incredibly important things in the air? I, I hope well, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, you know, while I'm here, Isabella, John, love you. <laughs> Just throw that out there. Um, so they'll enjoy watching Daddy. Um, I, I don't know, Michael. Honestly, it's 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 very time consuming. I probably have too many hats on, but I, you know what? This is what I love. You know, we, we all love this. This is our passion. I can't think of really doing anything else. I have a friend of mine who's a professor in psychology, and he says to me all the time, why don't you take your summers off? That's the thing about being a professor. <laughs> and I'm like, why would I take them off? I get to be in theater. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I don't know what to do if I'm not busy, I guess. You just do it. Yeah, I, none of How this is it? work. You just do it. <laughs> yeah, it's not hard work it's a way for me. Of life. I like yeah. it. I like doing all of it. You know, marvelous. marvelous. Well, it shows. It Thank definitely you. shows. Thank you. We've talked before, you and I, about the fact that you're very conscious as an actor, since we're talking about you, of sure. your physicality, and mm -hmm. that you just did fully committed. And every time, which uh, was a play in which you did how many roles? Uh, well, thirty-eight ish. And every time <laughs> you ch you turned. And you not only had a different voice, but you had a different physical uh, uh, approach to it. And I remember all the way back when you were doing naked stage shows, mm -hmm. you were very physical. Do you see that? Do you see that in other uh, actors, or how do you encourage that in other actors? Oh, I mean, when you're directing. 
Well, I, you know, I, I don't know. I think that's just, as a director, it's part of helping them get into a full character and get into, and, and really start feeling out what that is. Actors have different approaches. I'm, I'm a very physical actor. That's how I was trained. I was trained at, at Illinois State to be, to look from the outside in and inside out at the same time. So for me, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> <laughs> that one didn't work out. But um, no, that's just how I, how I look at characters. I, I don't feel comfortable in them until I figure out how they move, mm -hmm. how their body works with their voice mm -hmm. and works with what's going on inside. That's just, it's always been me. Do you have a preference um, as a, a director or as an actor or as an artistic director, or do you think they all feed into each other? Which one I like doing more? Yes. I love being on stage as an actor. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a higher toll on my life, being an actor. How the so? Time. It's the time. It's the, the six-week run every night where I don't get to be home with family and do everything else. Sure. So, so I have to limit that amount. Um, that's the higher toll. Fully committed kills me. I've done it three times, physically it kills me. I just want to sleep all day, I'm exhausted. It's, but, um, but there's nothing like that. Uh, other than that, I mean, I, li I like being an artistic director. I like being the director part of the artistic director. Mm. You know, I, I love trying to tear a, a, a play apart from the story, figure out what's really in the words and what's really in the storyline. That, that was my joy at Naked Stage, was taking pieces like No Exit and taking pieces like that an Adam Simkowitz play called Nerve, mm -hmm. and go, what is happening here? Let's get through this thing piece by piece together and discover it. That's what I like. The, the other thing I'm always interested in when I see uh, the City Theater shorts mm -hmm. is I always wonder how you manage to schedule different directors and different uh, actors in eight different plays and how, I mean, somebody's always got to be somewhere when another director wants them. How do you... Oh, we just, we just make up this really matrix-like grid. It literally is. It's a matrix. It's every hour. There are three rooms going on at the same time, and mm -hmm. one thing's going on in one room. It's, a, it, it's really about stage management at that point. Yeah. yeah. And there's, again, there's this great energy that goes on in those rooms because you've got so much going on in, you know, in four or five different rooms. It's, yeah. it's really quite wonderful. Yeah. What, what's your vision for um, Summer Shorts? Well, my, my vision is probably more for City Theater or in city general theater than Summer general, Shorts. Summer yes. Shorts, I think, is in pretty good shape. Yeah. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. like where that is, and that's what it is. Um, city Theater has been expanding over the last couple of years we, to more than just a summer festival. We, we launched a couple of years ago a program with Island City Stage called uh, Shorts Gone Wild, which is a silly title, but it's, um, it's no. an LGBT-themed LGBT um, short play festival. Uh, Michael wrote for us last year. And... Last year, right? Not yeah, the year before. Oh, yeah, that's right. Year before. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so that will continue. That product is actually going to Miami Beach this year after it leaves um, leaves Fort Lauderdale. We are we're, we're we're trying to expand programs and bring what we do to other communities. We did a show this year in Key Biscayne. We did sort of a best of show. The village of Key Biscayne basically said we'd like you to come do what you do here. And we're take, we want to take that model and push it to other communities. I'm trying to create co-presentations with other mm -hmm. theaters in the, the rest of the state to bring, that don't do this, to bring what we bring to them. So oh. we're, we're, we're looking to empire build a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're trying to build our, our whole brand. And your summer playwriting program. Yeah, that's, that's been the biggest uh, addition to us for years. Um, we have a, a conference called City Rights. It is a professional weekend for playwrights. It's now in its fifth year, and it attracts playwrights from around the nation. Artistic directors, uh, writers, agents. It's, it's gotten incredible attention. We've brought in uh, Tina Howe and Christopher Durang and yeah. John Jory as keynote speakers. Um, this year, the focus is going to be on uh, women playwrights <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, gender equality. Uh, we're looking for uh, diversity next year. to try to, We're trying to tackle issues that are out there. And, that's great. It's important. Uh, say I, I want to submit a play to, um, to City Theater for Summer Shorts or find out more about the City Rights um, Festival. How would I do that? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Thanks for asking. I'm so glad I did. Um, you go to citytheater.com. That's uh, simple. Yeah. Citytheater.com has our uh, submission information. It, um, and it'll have all the information. And honestly, any playwright can email me anytime. John at citytheater.com. Perfect. And you guys are, are uh, accepting scripts straight through the year. We generally, there is a submission. To, <clears throat> what is happening? There is a, um, <laughs> no, actually, usually we, we uh, I believe it's September, October 
is the general um, open submission deadline. That's on the website. Okay, cool. Um, anyone who's worked for us before, who's been with us before, send me one anytime. I'll be happy to read it. I know no, you it's would. It's interesting, Michael. If you submit a play and it's not picked, the rejection is not necessarily on the play. It's just that it didn't fit the eight. So, you know, when you think about that, they're really... It, it just has to, the punishment has to fit the crime. Well, that's a real and it big has thing. Nothing, do you tell the, the rejected playwrights that, that we loved your play, but? We, we, we don't. We don't have the manpower to respond to each play. We just don't. Um, when I see people, that is, that is really the truth. Very, very often, that's sure. the truth. Sometimes it's just as simple as that, is that it just doesn't fit in, the, in those, the, the, those eight plays that the package that's being it. put together. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. John Manzelli, you are one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and, and, um, uh, and giving us some insight to your world. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. Thank you to this incredible plan, uh, panel that I have the pleasure to work with um, every week. And thank you all for joining us. We hope you had a good time. And um, we're looking forward to seeing you next week. If you ever want to know what's going on in South Florida theater, simply go to floridatheateronstage.com. Anything you want to know about what's happening on any stage in this region is on that website. Thank you so much again for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs>